Hello and welcome to our vegetable production series with Sakata. Today we're going to be looking at soil prep and specifically the how and the why in terms of um, preparing your soil for your different kinds of vegetables and so forth. I'm speaking to Lolo from uh, Sakata, so he's going to be uh, guiding me through this whole process and let's see how they can add value to your farm. Lolo, how are you doing? Thank you and yourself, Andre. No, good, good. Yes. Right, soil prep. Let's start in the beginning. Uh, why do I need to prepare my soil? Well, that's a very important step. Um, so as you can see here, the soil here is a bit loose. If I can grab it a bit here, you see there? Yep. So the most important thing is that we want to get it as uh, loose as possible, not to be compact. Um, so what you want to first start by doing, we want to start by ripping the soil yep. and then plowing it. And then we put a rotivator through with it. So that helps us with the beds. First thing, yes. all these things you are talking about, they're going to cost me money. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so why is it important for me to loosen up the soil? So you want to have the best environment for your roots. So the more loose the soil is, the better your roots can develop. And if your roots can develop well, that's a better factory for uh, uptake of nutrients, uptake of water, which in result gives you a better crop in the top part. So you're talking about uptake of nutrients and uptake of water. Um, so just a question, does the water then penetrate better into the soil when it's loosened up properly? Yes, so it actually goes deeper rather than running off. And when it runs off, it runs off with your fertilizer, it runs off with your fertile soil which is uh, not good for you. So when you've got it uh, loosened like this, your water actually goes deeper into your soil and does not run off your soil. Okay, so you, you're talking about ripping and plowing, okay? So when would I, uh, and what is the different steps that I would take? When would I use a ripper? So when you wanna use a ripper is that when you wanna break that hard uh, pan of soil. Yeah. So that hard pan, you wanna put a ripper in there um, usually because we use vegetables we don't rip so deep because the root system is about 60 centimeters in most crops so you put a ripper in first that breaks that hard pan thereafter then you would come in with your plow yep and then after your plow we would put in the rotivator what function does the plow then have there uh, so what would happen after you've used your ripper you would still have big boulders yeah that you want to break down to even smaller ones uh, so the plow helps you with that so is it like the type of, um, there's, there's smaller boulders here, but I just want to pick up one or two just to show the people. Um, is it a question of that you've got the bigger, um, the boulders of the soil particles that are sticking together. You want to break these up so that you get an, an even seed bed at the end of the day, because otherwise you're going to get the seeds going there into the gaps and basically getting air and not germinating properly. Am I correct? That is correct. So that is both the function of the plow and the rotivator. So the rotivator would be more of the... But the rotivator is the, the one that, come, that comes after. After the plant. And that makes it nice and smooth. Mm, nice and smooth. So the, that basically just crumbles it up and... Even more. And gives you a proper seed bed. That's correct. Okay. Then there's another question that I've got. In terms of the firmness of your seed bed, how important is that? That is very important as well. So like I mentioned earlier on, if you can make the environment conducive for your plants, it's going to grow better. So if you've got a firm seed bed, when you're transplanting your, seed, uh, your, your, your seedlings or when you're sowing in your seeds, that is a favorable environment for your crop. So in the case where you don't have a, a, a firm seed bed, what would usually happen, especially with the finer seed, they would run off, they will not stay in the line, things of that nature. The other question I've got is in terms of um, if you take air that comes in there with a firm seed bed, you basically get most of the air out and you get a good contact patch between the ground and your seed. So how important is that when, when you look at the soil preparation? That is very important and we see it a lot of times where people have too much air gaps in their soil. And when they put in their seedlings, their seedlings die off and they think it's a disease, but it's just usually that air gap because there's not enough contact with the soil. Or they find you and they say, no, 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 you didn't sell me the proper seed. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> so all of these factors really, really important. So at the end of the day, um, if I understand you correctly, it's very important in terms of spending that extra money, doing that initial capital outlay and making sure that my soil is prepared properly. And if I do not know exactly how to do it, um, I can always get a specialist in just to show me, but it will definitely be worth it. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So yes, spending that extra money is going to be beneficial in the long run. And actually making a proper harvest at the end of the day. That's correct. 100%. Lolo, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, so 
more or less high level overview in terms of soil preparation um, with Sakata. Make sure that you see the rest of our videos that we've got in this um, series lined up for you. We're going to be looking at um, different uh, um, vegetable types we're going to be looking at fertilization and seeding the whole lot so make sure that you see all of the other videos till next time cheers